So when we're checking for this user role of admin, um, clearly we haven't defined any roles in our database yet. And so what I'd like to do is actually seed our database so that when the application starts up, it's going to actually check to see if the admin role exists. If it doesn't, it's going to create it. And we'll also seed in a so-called super user, like an admin user that'll get created um, anytime our application starts up as well. And that user will have the admin role. And that'll give us an easy way to actually get administrative access to our system through the front end and we won't have to do any manual SQL on the back end um, in order to get that privilege. So let's go ahead and write that method up. So in the data project is where I'd like to go ahead and store this. So let's just go ahead and add a new class. And I'm just going to call it data seeder. And we'll make it public. And then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and create a private application DB context field here. And we'll go ahead and throw that in a constructor. So we'll generate a constructor. And we'll set its value here. OK, so now that we have an instance of our context, what we're going to do is go ahead and write a method to actually create our super user. And I'm going to make this an asynchronous task. So we'll bring in threading.tasks. And we'll store this new user in a user variable here. So we'll make it a new application user. And for that, we'll need to bring in our models from the data project. And even though entity by default is mapping our usernames as our emails, um, that's not necessary and actually we're going to configure it when we take a look at the register form and the login form um, to make sure that we can actually use what you would typically consider an actual username which is something that is usually different than your email address. So we'll call it form admin, you can call it admin or anything you like. And then we'll have this normalized username. And we're just going to make that all lowercase. And we'll have an email. And this would be something you'd want to configure if you're actually going to deploy this app in production. Um, you know, this is a decision that you're going to have to make about um, what your you know the properties of your actual super user. I'm just going to kind of use some mock data here for uh, demonstration purposes. And we'll set email confirmed to true, lockout enabled false. And the security stamp is a GUID, so we can just actually um, say GUID.newGUID and then just to string. And then we're going to use this uh, role store, so we, we'll just call it store is equal to new role store. And we'll bring in um, identity any framework core. And here we'll have identity role as the type and this will pass our context and so we can actually use this to create a new identity role so we'll do that here first we'll see we'll check to see if it actually exists um, so like let's say our is admin role and that's going to be context dot roles now dot any and we can pass in, oops, first we need to bring in link. So just control create to bring in link. And now we can say roles.name equal to admin. And so this will return true if admin already exists. And again, these are just C sharp strings. And so just mind your capitalization, whether or not you're using a capital A in your admin role or not. And then we can say, so if there's not an admin role, 
we'll go ahead and use the store to create um, and in any framework core we have create async now a new identity role and we can just go ahead and set its name let's go ahead and just put normalized name in here um, as admin lowercase and this is asynchronous so the um, Visual Studio is going to tell me that I should probably await this and I'm just going to put this out onto a separate line here so we can kind of see it a little bit more clearly okay and now we'll do the same thing for our super user we'll say var has super user and I'd like to change this to has as well. Context dot users, obviously, any and just to avoid conflicts here, we're just going to name our uh, function u and then we'll say u.name is equal to user.username um, and remember that user is here our uh, super user instance that we'd like to create if it doesn't exist And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the uh, the output window here for right now. And set scroll off to 8. Okay, so here's our check to see if our database has an instance of our super user with the username form admin. And then we can just simply say if it doesn't have a super user, we'll go ahead and create it. So we can await store.createAsync and pass it our user Oops. and yeah we're not going to use our role store to add our user we need to create a user store so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to call this one role store and then we'll create a user store as well and we'll move these to the top of the class here or top of the method sorry and I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up and so we'll create our user and then we'll also await user store we have a method to add role so add to role async user and then uh, the second parameter is the actual role I believe so um, this will actually add the admin role to our user and I need to go ahead and change the variable name here to our role store and Next thing we need to do is we didn't define a password for our application users. Let's go ahead and do that. And you'll notice, let's go ahead and check out the user table in SQL Server Management Studio. And we'll go ahead and connect to local DB slash MS SQL local DB and then open up our databases. And now I'm just going to go ahead and right click on lambdaforms.dev and write a new query. And we'll select star from ASP.NET users. And if you haven't created a user already from the default login form, go ahead and do that just to take a look. You can see that you'll supply a password and then your password never gets stored in the database before it's hashed. So what happens is the database stores the hash and then the application will compare your input password hash against the, hash that's in, against the hash that's in the database 
and so that way then you're not just storing plain text passwords. So the way that we're going to kind of do the reverse of that when we create our new admin user is to use a password hasher. So we'll set password hash equal to hash password. And then what we're going to do um, just above our user object here is to create a, we'll just call it hasher. Um, that's a new password hash. And that's going to take like a user type, so application user. And I'm going to spell hasher with uh, an H. And then, um, so we'll say hash password is equal to hasher dot hash password. Uh, and then actually, yeah, so I think we have to pass hash password our user object. So we're going to have to restructure this a little bit. So we'll say user. And then this would be the plain text password. So let's give it the worst password of all time, admin. And, or one of the worst passwords of all time, probably. Um, and yeah, we're going to have to define user after it's been declared and then update our user model. So I'm going to remove it from here. And then we'll go ahead and move this down below the user. And then we'll update our user object here. So we can just say user .hash, or user.password hash is equal to our hashed password. Okay, so yeah, you can see how this kind of works. Um, this password hash allows us to hash a password. We can also use it to check verify hashed password. And that actually is the method you could use to indicate the result of a password hash comparison. Okay, cool. So now finally, um, so that takes care of our user. Um, we took care of our admin role. And now all we have to do is save the changes. So we can await and call context.savechangesasync. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now we have a method that we can actually use to seed the super user as well as this admin role if it doesn't exist. One thing I mentioned a bit earlier in the series is that you might consider having more than just a simple sort of admin role for this application. You know, you might consider the admin role something that you give like developers only or someone who's actually managing the application. And then you have tools for them inside the application whereby this admin role would be necessary to authorize them to use certain parts of the application. Um, and that would be something separate from maybe like a forum moderator who might have special functions available to them, like maybe archiving posts or banning users, that type of thing, um, but maybe wouldn't necessarily have access to all of the user data, for instance. Um, so just something to give some thought to here. And of course, you could write new methods in your data seeder here to actually take care of that, um, just as one simple way to create a few different types of user roles. All right, now we're going to head over to our startup class again. And then in configure services, we're going to go ahead and add to our services, we're going to add a transient of type data seeder. And then down in configure, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pass to our configure method here, our data seeder. And then somewhere in this class, we'll say here, we'll go ahead and just use the data seeder to um, seed our super user. And I'm just going to call wait on it. This is actually going to wait for the data seeder to complete. And in that case, maybe I shouldn't have made this an asynchronous task. Um, if I just made it a task, and then rather than do any awaiting, And then we went back into our startup class. We wouldn't have to call wait here. 
so that's something you could do. It's probably not, uh, I can't imagine that it's good practice to just call dot wait after you went through and actually made an asynchronous um, task. Um, yep, and I forgot to make sure that we go ahead and return, uh, we can return task.completed task. Go ahead and make sure that task returns a result as it needs to, and yeah, then we should be okay. So I just went ahead and took out async from our uh, seed super user method, and then instead of awaiting the, the final action here, we just return task completed task. Okay, we'll go ahead and make sure that this works. Um, so we have our startup class here, and it should fire. So it should call our seed super user method that creates that um, that user role as well as our super user when um, when our app calls configure at runtime. So let's go ahead and fire up the application. Okay, so it has started up. Let's go ahead and go into SQL Server Management Studio and once again, um, connect to your lambdaforums.dev database or whatever database you're using. And let's go ahead and select again from our users. All right, and so you can see, or you should see, that this admin user was indeed created for us. Note that there are a few things that aren't set here, notably um, the profile image URL is null and this member since is getting the default um, or some type of default daytime value here. And yeah, everything else is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and also select star from ASP.NET user roles. And this is that join table you can see with the user ID and user role. So we do have one set. And so we can expect to see from ASP.NET roles the indeed the admin role that we have. Notice also that it's automatically created an ID for us, as well as a concurrency stamp here. So all we had to do is provide the, uh, the name and normalized name in our actual data seeder class. So. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and actually log in as our super user. And we could we could work on this login form to make it look a little bit different or a little bit nicer as well. We had admin at example.com and our password was admin. So we can go ahead and log in. Oops, um, so it actually wasn't admin, was it? Invalid login attempt. So let's go ahead and take a look back at data seeder. And yeah, it should be admin. So let's go ahead and try again. Oops, actually I see what's happening here. Um, so even though the form says email, um, what it's actually looking for is a username. And so this is, I would consider this a slight bug perhaps, unless I'm misunderstanding something in uh, the, the uh, .NET Core MVC template when you add identity. And we'll take a look at the register form here to verify that. But it's actually setting new users email and username to be the same. So if we take a look at ASP.NET users, so email is admin and, or like for the first one that I did, the email was uh, Wes at Productive Dev. And then if we scroll over, the username was set to Wes at Productive Dev 2, even though the only option on the register form is to provide an email. And then of course you provide a password, but the label for username on our form is email, even though it's checking the username. So that's something we're gonna fix as well. And now you can see we've actually got ourselves into quite a little situation because of the fact that our form is validating against what it expects to be an email, but it's actually checking the username uh, because identity expects that to be an email by the way it's set up. So we don't have any way to actually log in using the current form. So let's go ahead and fix that now. So we'll close the browser 